There's one. There's one. Yes, sir. I knew it. I knew I'd finally get one and it feels a lot nicer. Probably one of the biggest fish in here. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America, from California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I have generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name's Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. Well, what's going on folks and welcome back to TRF. My goal with this series called 100 Ponds is to A, fish 100 ponds, find success in all of them, and the biggest success really is becoming a better bass angler and teaching you guys everything I learned along the way. If I pan this way a little bit, you may be able to tell, if you live in Texas at least, uh, the place that I'm at today. It is a location that is very near and dear to my heart, one that I have not been to in a number of years, but is my alma mater, Texas A&M University. I'm pumped to be back. And as I'm walking across campus, I mean, I can't lie, memories are, are flooding back. Things look the same as they did, but some things have changed, and that is an awesome pond that's been built here on campus, right next to Kyle Field. So I say without further ado, we fish for the very first time here in College Station at pond number 95. Now my first impressions of this pond are A, they did a fantastic job, whether it was the Association of Former Students or the 12th Man Foundation, whoever put this park into place, it elevates the feel of this whole tailgating area. I know we lost a lot of tailgating field, but to see a pond, let me show y'all. I know the drone shot just captured this, but check this out. Beautiful, clear water. We've got several waterfalls. Kyle Field is right there. And supposedly there's good bass in here, but none of that matters if we can't catch them. So I'm gonna whip out the Evolution tackle bag here. I had to walk a bit from my truck. Hope I don't get towed. They wouldn't dare tow a former student, would they? And I've got two rods with me here, my custom light and hyper mag reel for reaction baits. I'm probably looking at the cover here on the water. You'll see it on my chest mount here in a second. It's mostly like gravel bottom. Again, this is not a natural pond. It was built and stocked for the students and uh, fans here at Texas A&M. So I'm gonna go with a bluegill tungsten thunder cricket because I've already seen several bluegills in the water. And as much as the late summer, you know, dog days wants me to throw a drop shot, I think we have a better option that just actually hasn't launched yet, about to launch from Strike King. If I can find it, oh man, it's in my truck. I'll be back. And that brand new bait is the Strike King Homing Minnow, a pre-rig swim bait that I hope to do a full video on here in a bit. Ta-da! But man, am I excited about this because this style of lure right here is what got me hooked on bass fishing in the first place. It is, I believe this one's a quarter ounce, three eighths ounce, so a little heavier. I probably should have looked at the package and brought a quarter, but either way, I should be able to cast this thing around, hopefully catch some small bait fish eating bass. I don't know if there's any giants in here, but we're gonna give it a shot and it's cool to be back. There's a duck in the plants here. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to fish. I guess I will not be putting my, my rod over there. All right, first cast is going to be just a little flip out there. I'm kind of curious to see if it's more than two feet deep. No, it's like a foot and a half deep, at least right here. Maybe deeper out in the middle, but right off the bank, it is pretty dang shallow. And I do want to see how that swim bait looks. Looks juicy. Let's cast out to the bubbler out there. Much like many ponds in Texas, and I'm sure across the entire South right now, the water level is low. It looks like it's about a foot, maybe a foot and a half which is never a good thing. You don't usually want the bass to uh, not have the same water access as they usually do. Now, how will that affect the bite? I have no clue. All I know is that it is so stinking hot. I had to start filming today at 12.30 p.m. Yeah, I know, horrible idea. Uh, I should have brought a smaller swim bait. I did read the package, it says 3 8 ounce. A little too heavy for uh, how shallow I'm fishing. I can't really retrieve it as slow as I want. I feel like the waterfalls here are a good place to catch them if the water level is high enough. There's not really much uh, depth where the water's flowing in, so I don't know how many bass are gonna be there, especially at, again, 1230, and it's 100 degrees outside. I don't think they're gonna be perusing the banks. Oh gosh, oh no. Oh, the sprinklers just turned on. That's not good. God, what the heck? Who runs the sprinklers at noon when it's this hot? That is not a smart financial decision, a and Gosh, now oh, my pants are getting wet. All right, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just embracing the fact that my legs are now soaked. 
<laughs> by the dang sprinklers that are on. Oh gosh, now my body's... Son of a gun. Is that how you treat a former student? Now I'm stuck on a cypress tree. Oh, there's some bass. Some bass right there. They're on a dang wolf pack. They're on a dang wolf pack. Come on, my line's twisted. My line's twisted. No. No. Son of a gun, I see them. You don't, don't go nowhere, bass. Don't go nowhere. Man, they were not lying. These bass in here are small. There was about 10 bass all together eating bluegill as they swam. Dang, they do not want this swim bait. My goodness. Oh, I'm getting wet again. All right, they don't want the swim bait. That's like pretty obvious. So as much as I want to catch one on it, we're going to tie this off and get something different. Probably should have never untied the drop shot. So here we go. We're going to back up again. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. They're on a rotating cycle. Gosh, dang it. Unbelievable. <laughs> this is horrible. These ones are higher too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And you can't really wipe off a camera lens with an already wet shirt. I guess it worked. Well, this camera here is giving me an overheating warning, so I'm gonna stick it over here in the shade. You know what? I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn that off. Well, after a quick break in the shade and letting the water turn off on this area here, I assume in about three seconds, two, one, yep, they have started in that region. So I'm just gonna fish a little bit slower than maybe I'm used to fishing. That way I can kind of stay behind the sprinklers or maybe I should just hop one section and fish my normal speed to get ahead of the sprinklers because this is definitely making fishing a little bit harder than I had anticipated. And one thing I find so interesting, talking about that uh, school of bass I saw a second ago, is that they are schooled up relatively shallow chasing around bluegill in like less than two foot of water. So I don't necessarily feel like I have to fish super slow out deep. Are there probably bass out there? Yes, but just like I see in many ponds and lakes around the country this time of year, the fish do like to actually get in schools and I'm not sure if that's to conserve energy or, or hunt more efficiently, whatever it is. They like to skew up. And as crazy as this sounds, that's a bluegill bed and that's a bluegill bed right there. So we are in the end of August and the bluegill are still spawning. No wonder the bass are up shallow. I'm gonna walk and see if I can find them again. They're probably doing one big loop, so I doubt I'll see them going this direction. Ooh, I see one. I see a very small bass cruising up shallow. Come find my worm to give me a success. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, oh no, he ate it, but it was too small to eat it. He ate the tail and not the head. This is a tough pond. There are not many fish in here and they are not big. You know what though, being an on-campus pond for a school of 75,000 students in Texas, this is probably a little more pressured than I had even thought. And it's August, about the worst combo you can have. I'm gonna get my bags and focus on the bubblers. Let my drop shot sit out there while I get a rock out of my shoe. I'm sweating what feels like out of my butt crack, not just down it and in it, out of it too. That's a new level of sweat. Come on, just one fish. That's all I want. want to, I want a success here, come on. Oh yeah, it's so hot. How about under the bridge? I'm gonna leave this camera here and I'm gonna head under the bridge because it really seems like the only fish that will bite are ones cruising the bank and so the faster i can cruise the bank the better oh uh oh uh oh oh no i had one i had one my drag was too loose i'm not going to blame it on that it was a teeny tiny fish literally got him by the scale it probably wasn't even in his mouth all right a halfway tug let's go there's one, there's one. Yes, sir, I knew it. I knew I'd finally get one, and it feels a lot nicer than the ones I was just seeing. Yes, sir, hey, hey. Probably one of the biggest fish in here. Bring it over here, buddy. And he, oh, he's got, he's got friends with him. Oh, man, all right, I'm gonna bring you over here. We gotta show you to the big camera. My first bass at my alma mater, Texas A&M University, on the drop shot, who would have guessed it? These are the conditions for a drop shot. So hot, just dog days of summer, and it's not a big one, but, really really quality fish so i hope these fish in here continue to grow he's been caught a bunch though i mean his his mouth is all kind of messed up so we're gonna get you back in the water buddy thanks for playing and it's good to know there may be bass in that corner by that waterfall so i'm gonna pack up the camera here we're gonna head over there now two things are true one i've got bait pop i have no idea if it works i've told you guys in videos before i'm uh, i'm just testing out this kind of technology no clue honestly not a whole lot of belief in it but 
I'll take any scent and color and whatever that makes these fish stay on there longer as I can today. And two, I see a little culvert sticking out underneath the water. I don't know if there's any actual water flow, but that's right where I got the bite. So I'm calling it. I'm about to catch another one. I see one right here. Eat it. Ooh. My worm looks really weird with chartreuse bait pop on it. I'm not sure if I like that. Ah, who cares if I like it? Do the bass like it? Oh yes, they do. Oh my goodness. Hey, yo, got us one. Bass number two. I don't think it was due to bait pop because this fish darted at it from the second it hit the water. But that's a single scoop bass right there. Hey, ooh, I see another one in the water looking at me. My drop shot is in an absolute tangle right now. See a friend, don't tell your buddies. Look at that thing, look at that. Tangle doing the tango. I'm just gonna get a new worm, that's bad. That is not worth figuring out. It seems as if the culvert holds a few bass as they almost always do. If you've got a culvert in your body of water and you can make pitches and cast at it without the fish seeing you, Primo, and this is just so sick, catching bass right next to Kyle Field right there. I'll put the tripod on that little pavilion on that side and y'all can really see the view I'm seeing. This is so cool. I wish the fish were bigger, but when I was on campus, we didn't even have a pond. So I'd be grateful to have this if I still went here. Let's see if we can drop in the culvert again. No, I believe the bass have vacated the premises. Let's move to that side over there, show you all the pretty view. And as I'm walking around, I noticed there's actually a higher side to this pond here but I don't know how many bass would realistically be in the high side with all the rain they get in College Station. I feel like a lot of them would have flooded down. So unless I see one as I walk, I'm gonna skip this side. I mean, just look at that, dude. That's sick. Get to fish right next to the place where the fighting Texas Aggies on the day that I dropped this video are gonna <laughs> Notre Dame, hopefully. I try not to get too high on my Aggies. If you know much about college football, we have all the money, the facilities, the players in the world, but haven't been able to get a whole lot of those big wins. So we're hoping this new coaching change, Coach Elko can uh, make that happen. And I tell you what, there may not be many bass here, but this is one of the coolest ponds I've ever fished just based on the fact that this place means so much to me. And now there's somewhere to fish here, which is even better. And I think biologist Steven is in charge of this place in terms of the management and upkeep. Could be wrong on that, I gotta text him. But if he is, this place will be great one day. Forgot to fish a thunder cricket on the culvert from the other side. Ooh, how about fishing by the feeder, huh? Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure these are feed trained bass. And if that's true, there should be one around the feeder. Oh, never mind. LochowRanch.com. That is not Steven's company. That's another friend of mine that is an AM alumni here named Steven. I think. Steven? No. Robert? I forgot his name. That's not good. I'll find the guy and text him later. Let him know he needs to uh, put some more bass in here. Oh, something felt. Oh, never mind. My, my rod hit the tree. I'm tempted to like Daniel in the Bible, just kneel down and scoop up water with my hands. Okay, let's see how this looks here. We're good to go here, yes we are. I wanna catch one on the Thunder Cricket. I feel like it's possible. The bank looks a little steeper on this side over here by all the rocks. Just made a cast by those two boulders and a, another spillway, dang. I'm gonna parallel the spillway as much as I can before casting a drop shot over there. But it don't seem like if there are any bass, they want this thing. So I'll let the spillway rest for a few minutes. And when I put this down, my first cast will go right to where those two boulders are marking a spillway. Okay, blatantly obvious to me, these fish are not in a vibrating jig, even reaction bait mood at all. Not even the small homing minnow did they want. So. Drop shot it is for the rest of this pond. Get a good cast right parallel with the spillway. Hey, yo. Or the culvert, whatever you call it. Oh, I'm so hot. I'm over this, man. This is, this is too hot. I've got a bubbler right next to these deep rocks here. This seems like a good spot. I just wish I had seen how good it looked before I got on top of them. I feel like locking legs with my Aggie brethren and sawing them off right now. Believe it or not, I have not been to an AM football game in three seasons, which now, I'm not happy about it, but that's just the way the cookies crumbled. Hopefully this year I'll be able to go to my favorite one, which is A&M versus pfft, Horns Down, Texas. Matter of fact, all the Longhorns can go ahead and unsubscribe now. I'm just kidding. Don't leave. I like you here. Oh, there, there was one in there. My goodness. All right, last cast. It is, it is so hot. It's not even enjoyable knowing that the max size bass I'm going to catch is pound and a half and I'm sweating for that. 
Well, you know what, folks? We had fun. We had an adventure. The farmers fought. Giga Max. I'm going to turn the camera here to Kyle Field as I do my outro. Hope y'all enjoyed this episode of 100 Ponds. We are getting close to the end of the series, but y'all don't want to go anywhere. Trust me, if we have some awesome ponds to come, some awesome teaching. I just have been asked so many times by for, uh, current students at AM and people who are just AM fans who have come to tailgates, they've seen this pond, and they said, Tyler, get your butt down from Dallas to College Station and film on the brand new pond. I did, and it was technically a hot success. So thank you all so much for watching this episode. I will have all the tackle I use as always linked down in the video description. Those are affiliate links. So if you click on those and shop, it helps my channel continue to grow. If you want to watch my last Hunter Ponds video, it'll be up here in the corner, right on top of Kyle Fuel. And we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.